What's going on guys? Matt here from the Outer Rim bringing you another TTS video. I am joined tonight by the one, the only, fourth place Birmingham Regional Champion, Joseph Rowe. What's going on, Joseph? <laughs> Not a whole lot, Matt. Not a lot at all. Did you notice that fourth place champion? Because you are a champion yeah. in the game of yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. It's all fake news, man. Oh, watch yourself. Watch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to be bringing you Steven uh, at the top playing Snoke Tarkin. And at the bottom is Melvin playing Biggs and Lando with Armored Reinforcement. Roll off is just now going on. Got a three, four, five, six on those guys. A six on Snoke Tarkin. So they'll re roll for Battlefield. And while they do that, Joseph, what do you see as interesting in this Lando Biggs deck? Well, I mean, the biggest thing with the Lando Biggs deck is what we've seen. Just the speed at which this thing can roll out some damage on you real fast. And, uh, you know, if you don't watch it, uh, it, it's over before you know it. <laughs> it. It can be. It definitely can be. Biggs' ability to, to re-roll vehicle and mod dice is, is crucial. It allows you to... If you roll bad, guess what? You can re-roll again. No cards needed, anything like that. Alright, so Steven has a Sith Holocron, a Force Jump, Overconfidence, a Chance Cube, and an Anger in his opening hand. While Melvin's got a First Aid, Aerial Advantage, N1 Starfighter, Suppressive Fire, and a TLT. First thing we get is a resource and a two range on Lando. Snoke will come down with Force Jump. Force Jump has seen a lot of action recently. It has. I mean, it's, it's a fantastic, just low-cost upgrade for the meta right now. I mean, everybody is running damage. Everybody's doing aggro. And it's great. And it just has a tendency to continue to roll that special after you resolve it, it does. much to everyone's <laughs> dismay and hatred. Well, it doesn't leave the pool. That's the great thing about it. Yeah. It, you know, you roll the special, great. Turn a die, re-roll it again. So it, it's just continually threatening to mitigate your dies, and it forces you to discard or re-roll. Yeah, it really slows down the current kind of aggro-heavy meta that we seem to be dealing with right now. It definitely does. It's, it works great in mail decks. You see the yoda laid mail deck that's running mm -hmm. rampant right now, running that, and it's just, it limits the, the opponent's ability to resolve dice and forces him to discard, which just, th it flows so well with mail. All right, let's see what Melvin's going to pull here. So while Melvin's looking, looks like Steven dropped down a Sith Holocron. And there's the Falcon. Right. So the Falcon will come down, that'll be for two, with a combo of Weapons Factory and Armored Reinforcement. Hmm. Okay, it'll be Steven's action now. <laughs> yeah, I think in a Snoke Tarkin, Tarkin is definitely the target, and Snoke is the one you need to load up on first. Definitely so. Now, you, you got to watch it, because um, after a while, you know, I have seen it to where they just try to gun down Snoke, or if you see him with that. Um, so it could go either way. Um, you know, uh, me having played Vader, obviously, at the uh, Birmingham Regional, uh, if I were to sit down and see this, I would definitely see about think about going after Snoke, uh, just to really throw off the plan of the opponent. That's that's not a bad idea. Uh, and if you take a look idea. here, Melvin's got seven damage, you know, with a one indirect that he could easily put towards Snoke right now. Sure could. Um, and really slow that down a lot. So we have an overconfidence from Steven. Reroll Lando and the Millennium Falcon. Oof. Looks like Lando's going away. And he gets a two shield on the Falcon. So 
So I think it's important for, for Melvin right now to really establish a strong board state, which means he needs to, he's got the Falcon out. That's a great start. Mm -hmm. He's got the battlefield. So things like aerial advantage are online, but he needs a mod. He needs to get those resources mm -hmm. for that TLT that he has in his hand. He needs <clears throat> resources to get that in one starfighter to reset the Falcon. Yes. And, um, I mean, at, at this point I would really see about getting rid of first aid or air advantage to try to roll three roll to get something. But the problem is, is that now with Lando guys out of the pool, he really has no mechanism to get many resources right now. Yeah. So I think he would, and he if discards you... in one and I'm, I'm okay with discarding the M one. You've got a TLT still in your hand. Um, you need to re-roll everything right here. I'm not sure why he's not re-rolling the Millennium Falcon here at all. I'm not sure either. Uh, Steven has decided to bring in an AT, -AT onto the field. <laughs> that's, a, that's an illegal action. Yes. Gonna get a, turn, a TO involved with that. <laughs> Alright, so Steven brings the chance cube back in hand. Blank and, and a couple of focuses. Melvin will go ahead and suppress a fire, the two focus. Yeah. Suppress a fire is another one of those cards that is sort of, it, it, when it came out with, with Way of the Force, it was very strong and then it sort of faded off to the side. But now with these huge aggro decks and everybody wanting to go fast, it's, it's starting to make a return. And it's not. It's good to see cards that are cheap and that allow you to continue your flow of motion while disrupting your opponent's dice pool. Well, I think really where we saw that come back was when we see Rise of Vader uh, being heavily favored in the meta. Uh, Suppressive Fire really puts a damper on that deck. It does. It's it's one of the few cards that basically, because it's on your turn, or it's on the, the opponent's turn who rolls in Vader, they can't power action it back in. So when they lose it, they lose it. So four damage immediately gone off the table. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You, you move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think you see that combination <laughs> there with, with a Beguile or something, and, and that really impacts what you want to see is dice turning sides, not resolving or removing. Exactly. All right, so on the reroll, we get a Disrupt and a one indirect. So there's a power action to deal four indirect. Yep. I think you take two on the shields and then you do one to each. Yeah. You want to keep Biggs alive, but you don't want to put it all on Lando either. I agree. And I think at this point, Melvin's just got to take the damage yep. and just regroup. And there's a power action. And that's why, even though if you don't have your Force abilities in your hand, it's so great playing Holocron with Force Jump, because those two with Tarkin are a 33% chance of hitting blanks, and your opponent's not expecting you to resolve that for four indirect. Right, and it's just amazing how quick the indirect damage builds up with that deck. Um, it's very sneaky. Well, it is. I mean, if Tarkin rolls one of his die as a two indirect and it's power action by Snoke, that's a four indirect. If two dice match, that's another four indirect. And then if Snoke rolls two two indirects, I mean, you're looking at 12 indirect damage. With That's just character dice. That is nothing else on the pool. And there's really not a whole lot you can do about it. And that's, there's not. <laughs> that's you, where it becomes you know, very mean, frustrating from the other player. You don't want to spend your mitigation cards on blanks, but you you have to almost. You have to be aware that if I use if I see two blanks on the field and Tarkin's alive, I almost have to remove one of them. Yeah. I mean, and that's really why you see that combo of the Force Jump and the Zeth Holocron. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just every side at that point is good. It is. All right, so we see Melvin's laying down a mod now. That's going to help. <clears throat> yeah, that'll keep the Millennium Falcon in the pool. We'll get an early Tarkin rollout with a two indirect and a two discard. That two discard could be rough. Yeah, it definitely could. And Steven, I mean, Melvin has no resources right now to mitigate anything. Okay, 
So he'll go ahead and activate Biggs, which in turn allows him to activate the Falcon. And the Falcon allows him to activate Lando. So this deck moves fast, but he won't be able to resolve any of it at once. So we get a two, Ooh. a plus two. <laughs> Not yeah. great. He has the ability to reroll one die or reroll the vehicle, so he'll reroll the Falcon. Yep. I think it's two yeah, shields. Two shields. Okay. I think he almost resolved the now yep, power action, beautiful resolve and just mm. get rid of his hand yeah yep. that's where yeah that's a that's a nice play by steven there it, it is i mean it just shows the versatility of the snoke tarkin deck is they have so many ways and win conditions they can utilize to just tear you apart well they work so well together in so many different ways whether it's the power action of discarding the power action of damage the power action of hey i have nothing on the table except two blanks oh here's four indirect yeah yeah i mean there's just uh, there are just so many different ways that you can really put an opponent yep down quickly yeah and i mean and we see it right now <laughs> <laughs> i mean this game is clearly in favor of steven and snoke tarkin biggs and and lando may not survive this round if they are not careful Got two focus, a special. So he's going to disrupt the resource, which is the only thing he can do at this point. Yep. And then, of course, we got the resolution of the four speed that can come up. And hang on. Now you've got two blanks. I think yep. there's nothing else for force jump to use. So go ahead, power action, get your four indirect. Mm hmm. You're probably going to use the two focus. The yeah, two focus to turn the two Snoke die and then leave those two blanks there to go ahead and get another four indirect. You could also use the two focus to focus the one Snoke die to a two indirect and then focus the Sith Holocron to a special and use those two specials. And then if you want to discard mm -hmm. a reroll for you resources, you could. Definitely could. A lot of options. It's a lot of options, but it's also un unmitigated options. So Stephen can do whatever he wants. <laughs> exactly. Which is never where you want to find yourself. <laughs> no, you never do. Never do. <clears throat> that's, a, that's a sickening feeling to be on the other side of the table when you have zero cards, yep. no resources, yep. and no options. <laughs> Steven's going to discard the re-roll. I'm, I'm okay with this. I don't, I don't see any harm in it right now. No. He does get the specials, and he's got the blank still on, so he has two choices nice. on Tarkin's <coughs> power action. I think Melvin just claims here, yep. Yep. And there's the power action with the two specials. Yep, four and direct. Yep, so that's going to be four and direct. And yep. You got two and direct on Snoke. You've got plenty of focus. Okay, yep, and then just focus him to, to more indirect. Mm hmm. Four and direct. So right there in two separate actions, he's already done eight indirect. And then now he's going to end the round with three resources. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, do we expect the fist to make it out in the next turn? <laughs> you know, oh, I, I don't even, think so. I even, think with with the handheld yeah, cannon, he's he's that's looking, pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, at this point, there's really not a lot Melvin can do. Well, there's a second chance that could come in handy. Yeah, he's going to have to get the resources early enough to get that out. Uh, yeah. The attack run lets him activate one of his supports, but that, that card is unnecessary with Biggs. Mm -hmm. It does have Ambush, so... But he's not able to kill either character with just those two dice, so there's no need for no. that. BB-8 is a card that I don't see played that often, and I know it's because there are plenty of other mods and, and focus size right now, but do you see that as being a, a card that will be more prevalent come Convergence, or do you see it just sort of being one of those 7 $8 legendaries that sort of fall by the wayside like a chopper or something like that? I think it will probably end up falling to the wayside, really. I mean, it starts off, and it, it, it on the surface, it looks good. Um, yeah, no but blanks. it's just it, it, right. It looks good, a lot of focus, but it really, with the current meta, with as fast as things are going right now, it's just too slow um, to get what you what you want out of it. Yeah. Plus the stipulation of down at the bottom, where you really don't get the full effect unless you have a black one uh, out. So I mean, it's just kind of limited, and it already limits you too by using it. Yep, I agree with all that. I think. I think BB-8 is, is is a fun card to play in certain decks. Like if you want to be thematic and play him in, in a Poe Dameron deck with the black one, that's great. Besides that, it's it, there are other useful cards. So Melvin's got six range showing now and two indirect. It's just not enough to do anything. It's not. And there's the mitigation. Yep. <clears throat> So he'll make him re-roll two of the two range dies. And he can't touch the, the Falcon. Yeah. So no need to re-roll that one. And the TLT will come off. Now Stephen has two deflects in hand. Obviously Melvin's not aware of that. But Stephen's going to be able to remove any of these sides that show range. And put it right back into these characters. And that's another card, too, that you have seen come back from, you know, when that card first came out, it was used some, but I believe it's used more now than I've ever seen it used before. Yeah, this is the most I've seen it. You know, I started in the Legacies block, and the card was not very prevalent <laughs> then, but has Vader has come out. It's been a lot of Vader decks, and when you're a blue character, up against vehicle decks, you definitely want to have at least one deflect in your deck to counter those shadow caster die, Millennium Falcon die, any big vehicles. Yeah, and I think that's where you're at. You have a lot of these very high range die these days, where when it first came out, you just didn't have that. Yep. All right, so there's a power action that's going to be four indirect. I mean, that's. He's gonna uh, have that's to... that's really it. I mean, there's not a lot you can do about this. Yeah. I mean, it's it's over. So he'll have to put three in a Lando. Mm -hmm. So a two indirect at this point. I mean, even gonna... if he plays the second chance, it's prolonging it at this point. There's not a. It's not a lot he can do. Yeah, I think you have to play it though, just to save yourself. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> but there, there's, I mean, you've, you've killed your mitigation. There's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing. And you got Snoke that still has yet to roll out. I mean, at this point, you put it all on Lando, and yes, I think you put, I think you put all three on Lando, the and then yeah. take the six, and then take him back down to six. You don't need to be taking any on Biggs. I think he's going to, which he, I don't know if he realizes that, but he doesn't necessarily have to. <laughs> All right. That's... And Stephen adds insult to injury by putting. Yeah, that's pretty rough. <laughs> All right. So he's going to disrupt. Oh, he's going to pull that off because he is dead. And... Go ahead and do two indirect. Yep. Nope. And this should be the end of it here. 
So theoretically, Lando should be at six. He's showing five right now, but I don't think that's going to... I don't think one more is going to make a difference. <clears throat> Alright, so there's our two specials showing again. It's another four in direct, so that would put him at nine. Now, <laughs> he doesn't have anything to, to pay for easy pickings. Or even pin down. Yeah. So he'll just resolve the specials to do the four in direct and then you Snoke. Snoke into the two in direct on Snoke and that's your ball game. Yep. So the combination of Force Jump and Force Speed or Sith, Sith Holocron has been pretty much the MVP of this particular game. The ability of those to hit specials, use the specials instead of two actions or changing a die. It's, hey, here's four direct damage. Yeah, I mean, it's a good use of those cards. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's always interesting when you see someone take a card that's really designed to give you additional actions or to get upgrades out. And just utilize the dice size to get what you want. Yes, yep. you're not really using it for its uh, original intended purpose. Um, but it's, it's I love it when we see cards take on a different purpose than what they were originally designed for. Well, it, it, it makes the opponent think, hey, he's showing a special. He doesn't need to take two additional actions. What else could he use this die for? It just shows us it's important to understand the cards and understand what people are playing and how they're playing it um, because if you're just reading die size and going off what's showing on the card itself uh, these types of things are going to sneak up on you and catch you un unaware exactly and the classic example of that so far in this meta has been bait and switch <laughs> yes it bait. has that it has been a heck of a card bait and switch in a vader greedo and a han kira deck is deadly because you don't know if they have it or not, but you almost want to mitigate their resource sides. It is. I mean, it, and it just adds that one more extra level of depth to the game. Uh, it's, it's not surface only anymore. You really have to have some strategy and think beyond the initial step that what you're seeing. You do. Um, that, I, honestly, a card like Bait and Switch would be a great card to be reprinted, personally. It, 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 yeah. it does add to, to that thought process of the game. Am I thinking of all the possible actions my opponent can make, what can I do to counter that when it goes forward? Yeah, I mean, I think it just shows the maturity of the game and where it's going, and uh, uh, the player base is getting more mature in what they're doing. Uh, obviously, a lot more strategy uh, now uh, than when we first came out with the game. And I'm happy to see the direction that it's going. Well, I think it's going in the right direction. I think with, with new leadership, these guys have... I don't know what Steven's doing, but he needs to stop touching the toys. <laughs> <laughs> I think the game is going in the right direction. I'm looking forward to convergence. I'm looking forward to rotation. Rotation's going to be super exciting time. Um, get some new cards in. Get rid of some old cards. And let's see where the game takes us from there. But that's going to be it for tonight, guys. Thanks for checking it out. Congratulations to Steven for winning that match and obviously learning how to play with the ATATs. <laughs> Joe's a big shout out for uh, hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate it. Anytime, anytime. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you guys have a great rest of the night.